and welcome back. This is the second class of the coaching sessions for the Foundation of Relationship Framework, A Different Way to Live with Your Dogs. My name is Tracy Franken. I am a canine human relationship coach from Beyond Obedience. And if you haven't already seen video number one, I would strongly encourage you to do so. It is right up above this video. All these foundational blocks do build upon one another, so it's important to watch the videos in order. Also, if you were brave enough to share your leadership scorecard results in the group, I thank you. I, of course, shared my story of my move and how it affected my leadership scorecard. But if you didn't get a chance to share or ask questions about that leadership block, you still have time. Feel free to post your questions or your results in the group and we will see you there. But today we are moving on to the second block. So let's recap first the whole framework, the foundation of relationship framework again, leadership, relevance and fulfillment today. However, we are talking about that second block, which is relevance ah oh, be relevant what does that mean i asked my good friend siri for a definition and she came up with the quality or state of being closely connected or appropriate to what is being done or considered now that sounds kind of formal but i do like the words closely connected or appropriate to what is being done or considered so a favorite quote of mine, this is my favorite quote from The Dog's Mind by Dr. Bruce Vogel. A dog doesn't expect to be treated like a human. A dog expects a human to act like a dog, to participate in group activities, to play, to hunt together, to sleep in the same den. Now the truth of this quote hit me hard one day because as I was thinking about how most of us relate to our dogs, how we try so hard to make them our little fur babies, we assume that they want all of the comforts that we would want, but that simply isn't the case. When it comes, when a dog comes into your life, they don't just walk through the front door and think, yeah, I deserve to get that organic grain-free food in that orthopedic dog bed. They just don't. Now, of course, we enjoy giving it to them, but it is not their expectation. And when we give things that dogs aren't necessarily wanting or needing, we aren't being closely connected, are we? So a common misconception in the dog world is that love equals relevance, and it does not. It certainly does not. No matter how much you love your dog, no matter how cute you think they are, no matter how much you give them, it does not necessarily make you more relevant to them. So what is relevant to a dog? Well, dogs are all about survival. Survival consists of things like food and water and shelter and sociality. Those things are pretty important to a dog. So how do you stack up relevance wise when it comes to food? Did you go for a hunt today with your dog? Did you go out and kill something with your dog? Mm, or did you just put down a bowl of food for your dog? What about water? Did you find a nice cool watering hole after the hunt? Or did you just put down a bowl of water? I mean, chances are you always have a bowl of water and don't get me wrong, that's important, okay? It's important to keep water down for your dog. I'm just saying, relevance wise, you may not be getting the points you think that you're getting, okay? What about shelter? Did you invite your dog to share your den? Or does your dog allow you to share his den? I found this picture on Facebook a little while ago and I love it. It says, since the humans insist on sleeping in our bed, don't feel bad about taking up the space that you need. And how many of us have nighttime rituals like this with our dogs? Am I right? Am I right? Put your hands up. Anybody? Just me then? Okay. Okay. So how do you stack up relevance wise when it comes to sociality? Sociality meaning how your dog perceives other dogs, cats, you, that kind of thing. Do you play an active role in developing your dog's social skills or do you and your dog struggle in this area? 
right? Do you have a reactive dog? Do you have a fearful dog? I mean, chances are if you do, you and your dog may be struggling in the social arena. So be relevant, the scorecard. Oh, how I love me a scorecard. So the relevant scorecard is more of a sliding scale than it is an actual scorecard. So I want you to think about this one, each of these ends being two extremes of one another, okay? So on the one side of the relevant scorecard, you have the more dog-like side, right? So you have your dog over here and he's in nature, he's doing his dog thing, you know, he is chasing some rabbits, maybe some bigger game like deer, that sort of thing. And then in contrast, on the other side of the scale, you have the more human-like side, right? So you have a human, he's in his house, he's eating a pizza, maybe drinking some wine and playing the Xbox, right? So two very different extremes. Now, obviously, we want to try to encourage our dogs to be a little less dog-like, right? We don't want them out there killing things. But also, we want to kind of ask our human to come out a little bit out of his house, right? Enjoy nature, get outside a little bit to this nice sweet spot here where dog and man joyfully enjoy each other's comp uh, enjoy each other's company, right? In that sweet spot there. Now, this is the ideal situation, but obviously this is not how most relationships work, right? And this part here of the relevant scorecard, this part here, if you truly grasp this concept, it will set you free when it comes to all the dog training debates that are going on in the world, okay? So follow along with me if you dare, okay? So let's say, let's say for example, we have a huge gap. We have a very dog-like dog and we have a human that through no fault of his own, let's say has to live in the city. So he lives in an apartment. There's not a lot of green space, a lot of leash laws, that sort of thing. So he's way over there on the human-like side of the scale, but his dog is very dog-like. So we're asking that dog to come pretty far. That's a pretty big gap they have to fill. And that's fine. That is 100% doable. However, in order for this to be for this to work, the dog must have more obedience, right? That human is going to have to work really, really hard to make sure the dog understands obedience, they practice obedience. He has all the tools that he needs in order for that dog to be successful in that environment. But let's say in contrast, you have a human that has the ability to, I don't know, play a little bit more over on this side. If they, they are, they, maybe they don't live in, in the city. Maybe they live out in the country. Maybe they have an opportunity to act a little bit more dog-like. That is fine too. However, in order for that to work, the human must have more understanding more understanding of the dog's needs, more understanding of the dog's drives, all the things that make the dog work in this dog-like world, the human has to understand, okay? I hope that makes sense, but this reason why, this is the reason why there can be no one size fits all training, no one tool fits all training because of these differences in where people and their dogs fall on this relevant scorecard scale. So closing the gap, being more relevant. Let's take a look at this a little bit more here, okay? There are lots of things that will influence your relevant scorecard, okay? From the dog, the type of dog you have, to the human, the human restrictions. If you have, you know, back pains or whatnot, that will affect your relevant scorecard. And of course, your circumstances. Okay, uh, training or communication tools help to close that gap. Okay, if you've got a huge gap on that relevant scorecard, then training tools are what you can use to help bridge that gap between the two of you. Okay, more dog-like dogs require more communication tools to close that gap. 
maybe not more, but different communication tools to close that gap, okay? The more dog-like your dog is, the more clear you're gonna have to be on your communication and your tools may be different, okay? Less dog-like dogs require less communication tools, okay? And being on the dog-like side of this relevant scorecard is the best way to raise your relevant status, okay? So to recap, be relevant. Relevance to a dog is all about survival, okay? It's all about survival. And a dog does not expect to be treated like a human. That is very, very important, okay? A dog only knows how to be a dog, so treat them that way, okay? And then I'm gonna repeat this again. Being on the dog-like side of the relevance scorecard is the best way to raise your relevance status, okay? Remember that definition of relevance being closely connected. We need to close that gap on that relevance scorecard. And tools and understanding and obedience is the way to do it, all right? I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions about the relevance, the relevant scorecard, please feel free to ask away in the group, okay? This is one of the key concepts of the foundation of relationship, relevance. It will make or break your relationship. So if you don't understand, if there's something that I wasn't clear about, please make sure you ask me those questions within the group and I will do my very best to answer anything that you want in the group. See you there.